Welcome to Living Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, hello again. I'm Pastor Kathleen Casper, and this is Living Word. Living Word is a teaching program, and through it we seek to be drawn closer to our God, who wants us to be close to Him. We are presently going through the book of the prophet Jeremiah, and let us begin with a word of prayer. Good and gracious, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. It is a new day. It is filled with blessings from you. We are so grateful for who you are. We certainly thank you that you have shown forth your love for us by sending your Son into the world to take upon himself our sin and guilt and shame and the punishment that we all justly deserved. We ask now that during this time that we are gathered together that you would indeed uh, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, touch our spirits so that we might take away from this time what you would have each and every one of us individually take away from this message. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday we heard the Lord say through Jeremiah, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. In order to better understand the righteous branch spoken of in Jeremiah 23, we considered this, this passage from the vantage point of the one who was the righteous branch, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Mary, the son of God. We specifically looked at the story of the woman who was caught in adultery. The law of Moses clearly stated that such a woman was to be stoned, but the law of Moses also condemned those who wanted to stone her. They wanted to condemn her without recognizing that their own sins condemned themselves. So when Jesus suggested that the one without sin ought to be the one to cast the first stone, they all began leaving, beginning with the older ones. Finally, the woman was left standing alone with Jesus. Jesus could have condemned her. He was without sin, but he did not condemn her. But he also did not condone her behavior. He didn't disregard what she did or overlook it. He told her to go and leave her life of sin. She deserved death. She was given new life. We all deserve death. In Christ, we are all given new life. Aren't we glad that Jesus will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears? Jesus told this woman to leave her life of sin. Have we left our familiar sins in order, to, in order to follow the Lord? Throughout the course of yesterday's message, we heard the Lord through Jeremiah speak against the false prophets. The false prophets were filling God's people with false hope. They were saying that even if Judah would be sent into captivity, it would not be for very long. Jeremiah did not give the people such assurances. In fact, in Jeremiah 25, it was revealed to God's people that their exile would last 70 years, not two or three. The false prophets had not stood in the counsel of the Lord. They had not heard his word, nor had they seen it. Had they actually been in the counsel of the Lord, they would have proclaimed God's words to God's people, and their words would have been words aimed at turning the people of Judah and Jerusalem away from their evil ways and away from their evil deeds. The Lord also wasn't very happy about how the prophets were stealing one another's words, claiming that the words they had stolen from one another were words from the Lord. They were not. The Lord also had extremely strong words against those who esteemed their own opinions as from the Lord. Such a thing only distorted the words of the living God. In Jeremiah 24, we had it reported to us that the first deportation of God's people to Babylon had already taken place. 
The first to go were Jehoiachin, king of Judah, the officials, the craftsmen, and the artisans of Judah. In a vision of very good figs and very bad figs, the Lord told Jeremiah that he regarded as good the exiles from Judah who had already gone to Babylon. These people the Lord would watch over for their good. And the Lord was also going to bring them back to the promised land. He would build them up and not tear them down. He would plant them and not uproot them. He would give them a heart to know the Lord. These would be the people who would return to the Lord with all their heart. The remainder of God's people who uh, were left, well, they weren't going to fare as well. In fact, they would eventually all be destroyed. Let's begin reading today at Jeremiah 25, verse 1. And we do have quite a bit to read today, but uh, I think it's going to be all be quite uh, easily understood. Jeremiah 25. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of Judah and to all those living in Jerusalem, for 23 years... From the 13th year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And although, and though the word, and though the Lord has sent all his servants, the prophets, to you again and again, you have not listened or paid any attention. They said, Turn now, each of you, from your evil ways and your evil practices, and you can stay in the land the Lord gave you and your fathers forever and ever. Do not follow other gods to serve and worship them. Do not provoke me to anger with what your hands have made. Then I will not harm you. But you did not listen to me, declares the Lord. And you have provoked me with what your hands have made. And you have brought harm to yourselves. Therefore the Lord God Almighty says, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and an everlasting ruin. I will banish from them the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, the sounds of millstones and the light of the lamp. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. But when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians, for their guilt, declares the Lord, and will make it desolate forever. I will bring upon that land all the things I have spoken against it, all that are written in this book and prophesied by Jeremiah against all the nations. They themselves will be enslaved by many nations and great kings. I will repay them according to their deeds and the works of their hands. Now before I read on, I'd like to make a comment about the verses I just read. You know, as the Lord had declared, the Babylonians were going to be the instruments of judgment against Judah and Jerusalem. However, just because the Lord would use them to be his instrument of judgment did not make them innocent in the Lord's eyes. No, the Babylonians had crafted their own gods. They had their idols, their own gods and goddesses. So in the eyes of the Lord, they were just as guilty of sin as Judah was. This being the case, they too would be held accountable to the Lord for their sins, their deeds, and the works of their hands. Continuing at Jeremiah 25:15. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me. Take from my hand this cup filled with the wine of my wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad because of the sword I will send among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom he sent me drink it. Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a ruin and an object of horror and scorn and cursing as they are today. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his attendants, his officials, and all his people, and all the foreign people there, all the kings of Uz, 
and the kings of the Philistines, those of Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the people left at Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and Ammon, all the kings of Tyre and Sidon, the kings of the coastlands across the sea, Dedan, Teman, Buzz, and all those in, who are in distant places, all the kings of Arabia and all the kings of the foreign people who live in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, Elam, and Medea, and all the kings of the north, near and far, one after the other, all the kingdoms on the face of the earth, and after all of them the king of Shishak will drink it too. Then tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Drink, get drunk, and vomit, and fall to rise no more, because of the sword I will send among you. But if they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink it, tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty says, you must drink it. See, I am beginning to bring disaster on the city that bears my name. And will you indeed go unpunished? You will not go unpunished, for I am calling down a sword upon all who live on the earth, declares the Lord Almighty. Now prophesy all these words against them and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high. He will thunder from his holy dwelling and roar mightily against his land. He will shout like those who tread the grapes, shout against all who live on the earth. The tumult will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord will bring charges against the nations. He will bring judgment on all mankind and put the wicked to the sword, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. At that time, those slain by the Lord will be everywhere from one end of the earth to another. They will not be mourned or gathered up or buried, but they will be like refuse lying on the ground. Weep and wail, you shepherds. Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock, for your time to be slaughtered has come. You will fall and be shattered like fine pottery. The shepherds will, not, will have nowhere to flee. The leaders of the, of the flock, no place to escape. Hear the cry of the shepherds the wailing of the leaders of the flock, for the Lord is destroying their pasture. The peaceful meadows will be laid waste because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Like a lion, he will leave his lair, and their land will become desolate because of the sword of the oppressor and because of the Lord's fierce anger. Jeremiah 26. Early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they will listen and each will turn from his evil way. Then I will relent and not bring on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they have done. Say to them, this is what the Lord says, if you do not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and this city an object of cursing among all the nations of the earth. The Lord keeps on trying, doesn't he? He does not want to bring calamity. He wanted to bless his people. But he could not bless them because of their continual rebellion. Surely we need to thank him for being so very patient with us. Patience is a very good word here, but a much better word to describe the Lord and how he deals with us is this one. Long-suffering. The Lord is long-suffering with us. Ever since God's people had come out of Egyptian bondage, the Lord had suffered long with his people. He wanted to bless them. Unfortunately, their actions, their own actions, were bringing upon themselves judgment than the judgment they deserved. Well, God is no less long-suffering with us than he was with his people. He is extremely long-suffering with us. He wants us to turn to him. He wants us to leave whatever wickedness we keep holding on to to turn to him. 
Now let's read on and hear the response the word is going to receive from uh, the people. Verse 7. The priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priests, the prophets, and all the people seized him and said, You must die. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shiloh, and this city will be desolate and deserted? And all the people crowded around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and all the people, This man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. You have heard it with your own ears. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the things you have heard. Now reform your ways and your actions and obey the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he has pronounced against you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. Be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man should not be sentenced to death. He has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Some of the elders of the land stepped forward and said to the entire assembly of people, Micah of Morasheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. He told all the people of Judah, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill, a mound overgrown with thickets. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, or anyone else in Judah put him to death? Did not Hezekiah fear the Lord and seek his favor? And did not the Lord relent so that he did not bring the disaster he pronounced against them? We are about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. Now Uriah, son of Shemaiah from Kiriath-Jerim, was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord. He prophesied the same things against this city and this land as Jeremiah did. When King Jehoiakim and all his officers and officials heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But Uriah heard of it and fled in fear to Egypt. King Jehoiakim, however, sent Elnathan, son of Akbar, to Egypt along with some other men. They brought Uriah out of Egypt and took him to King Jehoiakim, who had him struck down with a sword and his body thrown into the burial place of the common people. Furthermore, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, supported Jeremiah, and so he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. Jeremiah 27. Early in the reign of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord said to me, Make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. Then send word to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon through the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them a message for their masters and say, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Tell this to your masters. With my great power and outstretched arm, I made the earth and its people and the animals that are on it, and I give it to anyone I please. Now I will hand all your countries over to my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All the nations will serve him and his sons and his grandson until the time for his land comes. Then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. If, however, any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke, I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plague, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of Babylon. 
They prophesy lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your lands. I will banish you and you will perish. But if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. I gave the same message to Zedekiah, king of Judah. I said, bow your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. Serve him and his people and you will live. Why will you and your people die by the sword, famine, and plague with which the Lord has threatened any nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, you will not serve the king of Babylon, for they are prophesying lies to you. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. They are prophesying lies in my name. Therefore, I will banish you and you will perish, both you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Then I said to the priests and all the people, this is what the Lord says. Do not listen to the prophets who say, very soon now the articles of the Lord's house will be brought back from Babylon. They are prophesying lies to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and you will live. Why should this city become a ruin? If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord. Let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the furnishings remaining in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem not be taken to Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says about the pillars, the sea, the movable stands, and the other furnishings that are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he carried Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, along with all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about the things that are left in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem. They will be taken to Babylon, and there they will remain until the day I come for them, declares the Lord. Then I will bring them back and restore them to this place. Already today, you've probably noticed that these words that have come to Jeremiah have, they've actually been spread out over a, a number of reigns of different kings in Judah. You know, we have all of these bound up nicely in the Bible, uh, but these were actually uh, words of the Lord that came to Jeremiah over the course of some time. And so we kind of bounce back and forth between those that, uh, well, it's not in chronological order. And uh, so we have to keep that in mind as we're reading through these things. Jeremiah 28. In the fifth month of that same year, the fourth year, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azor, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the kings and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the, of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And he said before all the people, this is what the Lord says. In the same way, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, 
the prophet Jeremiah went on his way. Shortly after the prophet Hananiah had broken the, the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over the wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I am about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you are going to die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month, or two months later, of that same year, Hananiah the prophet died. And this is where we're going to stop for today. And we just, uh, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we just, we just give you thanks and praise for your word. We give you thanks and praise that you are so, so very long-suffering with us. Heavenly Father, forgive us for trying your patience. Forgive us, Lord, for being rebellious and stiff-necked. Forgive us, Lord, for not quickly repenting when you have given us a word that says we are in the wrong. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that we would not be hard-hearted or, or rebellious or stiff-necked or stubborn. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would be uh, soft and receptive to your word. And in fact, we would go ahead and do everything that you would have us do. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. You have made it very clear to us what it is that you expect of us. We pray, O oh Lord, that we might be a people that truly do seek to um, bring honor to your name. Heavenly Father, um, your name isn't honored throughout the earth, and, and it is by and large our fault. We have, not tr we have not honored your name, and so the nations have not honored your name. And so we ask you, Heavenly Father, that we might become a people that truly do honor your name, that we hold it up in great esteem, so that, in fact, um, you might be blessed and that the nations might bless you as well. Heavenly Father, I bless these people now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Bye-bye and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining Pastor Kathleen. Through this message, we hope that you will have come to know God better. God can be known and wants to be known by each person on earth. God is a communicator. He has given us the Bible, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit as means through which He reveals Himself and His will to us. God is love. And regardless of what is going on in your life, God loves you and is concerned for you. He is as near as a prayer and He can be trusted to be faithful to you. Living Word is a listener-supported program. Your prayers and donations are needed to keep this program on the air. Donations can be through the Living Word website or sent to Living Word. P.O. Box 3810, Alice, Texas, 78333-3810. If you have a question you'd like to ask Pastor Kathleen, a comment you'd like to share, or would like to purchase a CD of this message, and have access to the Internet, Pastor Kathleen's website is www.livingwordradio.org. If you are in the area and would like to join Pastor Kathleen and the congregation she serves on the weekend, she is pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Alice, Texas.